Yeah, the second job is the EGR valve. Now that is, uh, and cooler, blanking them off, shutting them down. Now that is not controversial, but um, the EGR, which is the exhaust gas recirculation uh, unit, it basically is a cooler and valve. And what it does is it feeds exhaust fumes, or unburnt gas rather, back into the uh, engine. And the whole point is to reduce nitrous oxide. Uh, emissions. Uh, it's done to meet UK, I think e EU emissions, but in South Africa, it's not. That it's not there to meet emissions, um, and it's meant to yeah improve the environment. I mean, look, man, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all big on that. I really am. But when it comes, I try. You know, I'm not going to go into that. I mean, I try not to fly. I, you know, carbon footprint, blah blah blah. But I mean, the way to um, help the environment is not by ruining a good bit, bit of machinery and it, with, a, with a negligent amount of uh, improvement to the environment. So uh, what the EGR, what happens with the EGR is as that gas uh, recirculates back into the engine, you get a lot of uh, the combustor, uh, the, the, the temperature at which the, uh, the, the air that goes into the engine combusts is lowered. So you get less fuel efficiency and you get less power and you get a lot of carbon build up in the engine. So that eventually ruins your engine, especially in the inlet manifold going into the, going into the engine that side and exhaust an inlet manifold. So it, it, to be honest, long term, I mean, in terms of fuel economy, if you're gonna do a long distance trip, uh, you're, you're ruining your fuel economy, your, the rate you burn fuel anyway. So it's negligible at the end, you know, whether you are improving the, economy, the environment or not. So we're gonna block them off clean up the whole car, clean up the whole engine, uh, the inlet manifolds and the, um, and the um, exhaust manifold and, and, uh, and clean up those injectors. All right, Percy here mm. is taking off the uh, inlet manifold. So now we can get to the EGR. Yeah, if I know, if I know. There's six bolts there, exhaust uh, on the inlet manifold, they have to come off. <laughs> See, down there, and then along there, and then three underneath as well. So you just use a long ratchet, long extension, you get to them and you remove them to get to the uh, inlet manifold. So you can start doing the EGR. The EGR is here at the back, down there, that silver you see down there. Yeah, that's the EGR. So we need to blanket at the top and the bottom. So, what we've discovered is that in the inlet manifold there is a lot of uh, sludge like oil like sludge and um, if you can see where, where is it down here it's going into the inlet yeah into, ah, we can't see it this side hang on a sec we've discovered a problem here there. See that? That should all be carbon from the EGR, but it's actually sludgy. So, Seppo, I'm just we just had a massive discussion here with Seppo. Um, Seppo, so what, what, so what we're saying is that the oil going into the engine obviously is a, is a, is a massive problem. It's a massive problem, but could uh, but, be, but it could be maybe from the oil, old oil from the intake, yeah, from the intercooler, yeah, that could happen. So, so, so hang on a second, we, we said that because I changed the turbo diesel about two years ago, we're discussing whether the oil, the it's oil, the old one or... is it older than new one. Now, when I smelt it, it doesn't smell like engine oil, and I'm not losing oil. So the suspicion is that, as Teppo suggested, is that it's it's the it's the old turbo diesel which yeah. was really messed up, and it's the old sludge from the oil. So every time it heats up. Either the intercooler, um, back, you know, brings back some of that oil yeah. from uh, the old, the old, um, the old uh, seepage, or it's it's the um, the old oil that burns up and it basically um, becomes sludge every time it heats up. So the suggestion is that um, we clean it all up and then drive it around and then see if it is a turbo diesel, uh, the new turbo. We doubt, I doubt it's a new turbo diesel. It's probably from the old one because I'm not losing oil and. Um, and uh, it doesn't smell like engine oil to me. <laughs> okay, so new plan of action. We are just gonna check the turbo pipe coming off the intercooler first. I don't know if you can see it down there. Uh, but basically, um, yeah, their turbo's got his hand on it. That it comes off the intercooler. If there's oil on that, 
then we've got a problem probably and it's clean no it's oil it's oil but it's, it's not that bit. bad it's, it's not normal it's normal it's yeah normal. yeah, yeah. I, can see that. I, can, I can see that mm. no no that's normal that's a bit of oil but it's not much yeah it's not that's much. not much at all either way table needs oil to run on it and it's old oil I yeah it's smelt it yeah it's a bit old yeah. yeah it's old oil so we are safe so i reckon that is from the old turbo diesel yeah, and that's old. how we found out we basically looked at the turbo pipes we, we sussed out that they, we're not losing oil when i check it hasn't been losing oil at all the oil itself is old because it doesn't smell mm -hmm. uh, like new or new burnt oil mm -hmm. uh, so we determined that all it's this oil leak safe. is from the old turbo diesel mm. yeah yeah we're safe we're safe mm. right just removing all the carbon from the uh this is from the the pipe the radiator pipe i think yeah goes straight into the engine See, that's all the carbon. That's from the EGR. That's a build up from the EGR that then gets into your engine and it clogs it up. I'm gonna get inside there. Come down here, Percy. Just have a look on the side there. Can you see it? Right there. Just gonna turn it up. Make a jump on this in a sec onto the wheel. There we go. There's a crate here. So see, I've been driving it around for a week. I've been driving it around for a week and there's no extra oil. So after, after we said last week, it's um, the, the new turbo diesel isn't leaking, it's from the old one. I had a bit of oil residue inside the, um, going into, into, into the inlet manifold. So it's good that I changed the turbo diesel when I did two years ago. But there's no new oil going into it, so we don't have to bother with the uh, turbo diesel. Just gonna clean out all this sludge. Slight mixture of oil, mainly carbon, and then we're going to blank off the EGR. Is that brand new? videos but anyway what we're doing now is just cleaning out the uh, the manifold Percy used uh, paraffin here a uh, good substitute for that carbon removing spray uh, I was using elsewhere and he just let it evaporate just like the spray uh, I actually asked him if he was going to uh, burn it off I have no idea about what Alex weighs eh uh, we're also obviously removing all the carbon. I've done it on the injectors, done it on the cover now, done the inlet manifold. The, uh, sorry, the injectors. Uh... You can see here the build up. I've already cleaned this one, but look, just check here. Check how bad it is. It's inside. Okay, bring it out. Can you see that's just from one scrape? That's just from one scrape. So I'm just going to scrape it out using a screwdriver and then um, use the, uh, the braking cleaning fluid on the towel to clean the rest out as much as I can out the inlet manifold. See with the EGR blanks we bought from a reputable garage and uh, didn't fit onto the gasket, onto the, 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 the blanking gasket on the cooler and valve, or on the, on, the, on the valve side it didn't fit, on the cooler side it didn't fit, but on the valve side, the, the bolt holes were too small. So we would have to drill them out anyway. So anyway, we decided to make our own. I mean, the, 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 the EGR blanking kit is literally just a triangular bit of stainless steel anyway. So we'll take out the gaskets on both sides of the cooler and valve of the EGR and we'll measure it up and we'll just make our own. I think that's easiest and it's cheaper, it's a lot cheaper. Okay, so we've taken off the gaskets on both sides, the cooler and the, uh, the, uh, the valve side. Um, as you can see, one is bigger. So the kit I got, the EGR blanking kit I got for about 500 Rand, so just over 500 Rand, which is divided by 18 for dollar, 18, 19 for dollar, 23 for pound, uh, was that size. 
That one is a different size. The ones I've seen actually got two hooks. So the place that I love the place I go to is the cheapest bait and they get they do amazing uh, OEM parts, uh, aftermarket parts for the best price in the country, I'd say, in Selby. But they insisted that the Puma blanking kit the, was for the 2.4. I suspect it was for the 2.2 Puma Defender Turbo Diesel, TDCI. Um, so yeah, there was that size. So what we're gonna do anyway, we took him back, got my money back. They kindly gave my money back. And we're gonna fashion our own. If you can see the, uh, the pencil, uh, markings on the steel sheet um, that now has um, uh, we're going to use steel not aluminium by the way because uh, there's no water coming so it won't rust um, so basically we just we just mark them out and we're gonna we're gonna just cut our own um, steel uh, blanking kit thanks man uh, sorry man it's really hot here Hurst just bought some water man really nice guy all right buddy uh, there you can see Topo's about to start he's having his water and he's, he's going to draw through that down uh, that's not good advertisement, but it shows that week. <laughs> shows hard work. And uh, we're going to drill through there, through the through the holes. We're going to draw the bolt holes there, and then he's going to he's going to use a saw, I think, uh, to do the sign. And here, here's him doing that. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. That is really. This person did a really good job on that. On the other side, you can't see that. And now. Uh, Seppo's doing the um Seppo's making the uh the EGR. The uh the EGR bank is pointing to the one he's already done on the valve side. That's a beautiful, look at that. We're gonna clean that up on the side probably. And he's doing the uh the cooler side now. There you go. We'll put back the gasket on either, either side as well. And there you go. I don't have a temping um, it's a uh, Alex Camping. Yeah. the uh, EGR blank on the cooler side but being put back. Uh, you see that the water on top? That is how the cooler works. It just cools the outside of the gas that goes in from the exhaust that goes through the engine on the other side through the valve, removing all the particles in the valve. Well, this is the cooler side on the driver side of the back of the engine compartment. And uh, Tepe is just fitting back the gasket and the blank that he just fashioned the steel uh, out of the steel sheet. And that's it. You put that, and you put it on the other side, and there you go. That's your EGR blank. It is going to affect your your, mal, your engine malfunction light is going to come on, but we'll talk about that to, on Monday when I have to take because you have to take it in for software remapping, uh, as all the sensors will be out of whack uh, around the EGRs. It, it won't detect any uh, flow going through, any exhaust uh, gases going through. So your engine malfunction light will come on, but it will drive normally, mechanically. Mechanically, will be not a problem. And you just take it into a specialized uh, software remapping. They'll plug the car in and they'll uh, just uh, remap the, the software, uh, reset the software called remapping. And uh, Bob's your uncle. You have a better functioning, better fuel economy, better fuel efficiency, uh, Puma. Um, yeah, even though your emissions are slightly up. There you go. So all in all, a great job. Uh, seems to be working well. What's interesting is that the uh, engine malfunction light hasn't come on, which should come on if you blank the EGRs, because you've got obviously no gas going down that valve, so the sensor should read a problem. But and the engine malfunction light usually comes on, and that's why you have to reprogram, re-software them. But up to now, it hasn't come on. So look, I've got it booked in tomorrow, but if it doesn't come on and it's driving fine, do I spend uh, 2,100 Rand? Uh, uh, reprogramming it, re uh, remapping it as it's known, or do I just um, just uh, live with it? I mean, as I said, it's all mechanical. It's just all to do with the sensors now. So if the sensors aren't blinking and causing trouble, uh, I will think twice about re remapping it. 
Uh, you can actually also remap the injectors, the, the amount of fuel that comes out of the injector so you can perfect the engine performance by remapping. And that's more expensive. That's about 4,200 Rand, I think, off the top of my head for the place I was going to go. Um, but to be honest, with the EGR blanking, that's enough. I'm not putting carbon back into my engine uh, through the inlet, through the, uh, inlet manifold and the, air, the inlet, the air inlet into the engine. So um, I'll think about that before I go on Monday. Today's Saturday. Sorry, two days I've got to think about it. So yeah, all in all, a great job. Uh, I actually like the conditions I'm in. Really raining, so I'm going to be using the clutch a bit. So I'll, I'll really figure out if it's broken. If I break down, I just called Seppo. I parked to one side, called Seppo, and we'll sort it out. But all in all, just put the I can't wait to put the aluminium mesh on. Um, on the front, it looks really good. I, I loved it. Uh, so yeah, all in all, a great, great bit of work. And we found out that the turbo diesel is working just fine, the new one, and the oil was from the old one. That's all been cleaned out now, from all the inlets, from all the uh, the air inlet manifold. So that's fantastic, fantastic.